Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Andy Gala. I'm going to be reviewing over of an application that I scaled to 10,000 requests per second, and I'll kind of briefly go over my journey um, of, of accomplishing that. So initially, I want to go over the application architecture that I inherited. I inherited an application uh, that was a React client and Node Express on the back end on the server that was linked to Mongo originally, but I went ahead and migrated it to Postgres because I found that I was getting much better performance in Postgres. Total um, um, inputs in the database was about 24 million reviews. And initially what I did was I went and migrated this to AWS. I put the application on an EC2. I also put Postgres on an EC2 and then linked them together. And the performance I was getting initially on this initial deployment was about 300 to 500 requests per second. So I'm going to go over how the, the journey that, that, that I went through to, to scale this out and some of the pitfalls and discoveries that I made as well. So initially, um, I realized that, okay, if I want to scale this out to more, the most obvious choice was to basically add more servers, right? Add more servers, get more performance. So I looked into Nginx as a load balancer. I looked at three different load balancing strategies, round robin, least connection, and then IP hash. I found round robin to be the best choice. Um, so just to give a brief overview of how the round robin method works, you have an Nginx load balancer that's hosted on an EC2. All these applications are also hosted on an EC2, and Postgres is on an EC2. A client makes a request. Nginx load balances it, sends it to application one. Client request two will go to application two, three to three, four to four. When client five uh, uh, has a request, it will basically round robin back to application one. So it just iterates through all the different instances uh, equally. And then all of these are just connected to one Postgres database. And so I can show you some performance that I got um, using the round robin. So this is this is basically this is one. EC2 instance is what it was initially, and you can see here that we have around 300 requests per second. And again, this is on Loader IO. That's the um, the stress test tool that I used. Uh, now, with four instances, I got about 2,000 requests per second, which was pretty good. Um, and you can see here it's all going through. There's no errors. It's running uh, pretty smooth. And so this is what the architecture looked like. Um, Nginx as a load balancer for instances of the application linked to one database. And when I got to this point, I thought, okay, well, can I optimize this more before I really start adding a lot more instances and machines? What else could I do to optimize this? And I looked into caching and more specifically Redis as a, as a cache. And I'll go over a little bit of what the, the application architecture, how that data flowed, and why Redis was something that I that I thought could increase performance. So the user makes a request, it's going to go to Node in the server, and then from there it's going to make a request to Postgres, it's going to get that data back, and then in the REST API it's going to clean up that data, do some manipulation to that data, send it to React, React is going to create a bundle, it'll send it back to Node, and then that goes back to the user. And there was some work happening here because the data that React needed was different than what was being sent from Postgres. And this is where Redis, I found Redis to be um, to, to be a, a, a way to optimize. So let me just kind of go over this, this flow chart here. You have a listing ID. First thing that's going to be asked is, is the data cached in Redis? If it's not, it's going to get the data from Postgres, it's going to format the data in the API, save the formatted data to Redis, and then send the data back to React. However, if the data is cached in Redis, meaning we go to that listing ID twice, it's going to just get that formatted data directly from Redis, it's in constant time, and then it'll just go ahead and send it right back to React. So we do have a little bit of a, a performance boost here because we don't have to format anything in the API. We just directly can go to the API, get it from Redis, send it back to send the request back to react and so i can show you here that um uh one i i, I scaled down to two servers just because i didn't want to spend a lot of money on aws <laughs> um, but you can see here with two servers a thousand clients per second 
it's getting errors, it's timing out, you know, this is just not a smooth line here. But once we went ahead and add that cache, you can see that initially it is a little rocky, but then once it's cached and it's getting it from Redis, everything smooths out. So we had an increase, 5x increase in performance just by adding, uh, just by adding Redis, which I thought was, was really great. Uh, okay, so let's see here. This is just a little diagram of what that architecture looks like. You have two apps here. It's going to either grab it from Redis if it's already cached, or it's going to grab it from Postgres and then go ahead and cache it in Redis and then send it back and still using Nginx as a load balancer. Okay, so now was the time to scale. <laughs> and this is where this is where I said, okay, let me add as many servers as I can and how can I get this to 10,000 requests per second? And some interesting discoveries were made during this process. So this is four servers with Redis caching. I also have New Relic uh, to, to basically see how long everything's taking. That does slow down performance a little bit. And I'll, I'll cover a little bit more on how I got around that. Um, but at 2.4K requests per second, four servers with cache, New Relic, uh, you can see it's not really great performance, getting a 28% error rate. When I added eight servers, everything did smooth out. And that was basically the best I could get. And this is where it got interesting because I thought, okay, I have eight servers. What if I have 17? What if I have 20? What if I have 50? And the performance actually decreased when I added more servers. And that was very, very fascinating. You can see here that we got a 21% error rate. Uh, not really great response time. And you can see that it just starts going out of control after about 25 seconds. And what I concluded was that there is a limit to how much we can put stress on this database or Redis, that it's basically clogging up these pipes here. When we go ahead and try to scale up, even if we add more servers, there is a finite amount of, of stress that those pipes can take. And so that got me thinking. And it got me thinking is that, well, right now, if I want to grab something, I'm still having to go to the app, get the bundle, do all this work, either get it from Redis or Postgres, and then send it back to Nginx. And I thought, well, what if I can cache at the load balancing level? What if I can just cache the HTML, CSS, the bundle right here in Nginx? And so when the user asks for something, it doesn't even flow down here. It just takes it straight from Nginx, sends it back to the user. And a um, little bit of a difference of how Redis uh, caching versus Nginx caching works. Redis is caching the JSON, so it's a string, but it's just caching the data. The data still needs to go to React. It still needs to, a bundle needs to be created, and then it needs to get sent back. In Nginx, you can cache static content. So you can just cache the static files, the bundle as a static file, the HTML, CSS, the whole thing, and it never even needs to go down to Node. It never even needs to go down to this app layer. It, it can just be cached right up here and sent right back to the user. And I'll show you here my results, and that is how I hit 10,000 requests per second. It was really magical because I have 17 servers here, and I'm not getting the performance I'm getting with just two servers when I'm caching at the Nginx level. So. It's a 10x increase in performance, which means that there's a 10x reducement in costs in your AWS costs. And, um, and just doing those small little adjustments, you know, you can save a ton of money and get a much, much better performance. And you can see here that initially in that first 10 seconds, it's caching everything. Once it's caching, everything is smooth after that. And this is New Relic, the New Relic dashboard. Uh, you can see that around 500 to 750 is where everything was cached, and then it didn't even get any requests after that. And again, that's because New Relic is is in the app layer. So when after we had everything cached, it wasn't even hitting the app layer. It was just going straight from the Nginx cache back to the user. So that's what I got. Thanks for listening, and um, yeah, enjoy.